Hello everybody, welcome to our unboxing of the Silverstone Precision Series PS08. This is a micro ATX case from Silverstone. It's an entry level case, it's going to cost somewhere around 30 to 40, sometimes up to 50 dollars depending on the site you're getting it from. And uh, it's a great option for those people that are looking to get a nice HTPC or something like a small cheap gaming rig they can take to different LAN parties. We're going to be taking it apart analyzing some of the goods and some of the bads. Obviously with this price point we're going to have some negatives to talk about and uh, we'll get an idea for you guys on whether or not this is a purchase that's worth your money. All right, let's break into this thing. So <clears throat> again, it is branded with Silverstone. Uh, nice brown case for you. Not the most expensive thing in the world. We're going to start opening it up and kind of show you guys some of the innards, what that all means to you and how you can actually do a build with this. They do a fine job of packaging, I'll tell you that much. Now, as you can see there, it is surrounded by foam to keep it all nice and safe. Like a glove. The whole thing is covered in plastic to keep it all safe from scratches. And as we remove all of that, we get ourselves the case itself. You can see it has very nice defined lines. It's actually going to look really aesthetically pleasing, especially for a $40 case. And uh, we'll turn it here to the side. There is a side vent, as you can see here. And it does have these nice little grooves to stick your fingers on as you're trying to pull open the actual case itself. Let's look at some of the features. On the front panel, we have ourselves two USB 3.0 slots. We have a microphone in as well as an audio out. So this is going to give you basically your full array of multimedia from the front. Uh, the drive bays are nice and easy to get out. You just push in the clamps. It's hard to do it from behind, of course, but comes out without a whole lot of hassle. You're also going to notice it does have a very nice mesh cover with Silverstone branding right at the bottom. If we pop this here, we get the vent cover to come right off. It is uh, all mesh, so there's not any sort of like HEPA filter or anything like that in here. However, this is going to be very nice for cleaning out the dust that's going to go through your case. This is designed initially from the manufacturer as a positive pressure case. So it only has one fan. It's an intake fan only, and it is through a ventilated area, which is in this mesh. We do have a 120 millimeter fan. I didn't check the actual CFMs that it pushes. But since it's a standard case fan, you can probably assume anywhere between 1600 to 2000. It's not going to be the best thing in the world. You can probably get a higher power fan to fit in there. So as we look through it, uh, again, it is really nice, uh, really nice build quality. Not a whole lot to be upset with as far as the outside is concerned. Uh, on the side, you do have your vent cover. It's not going to be a, a window cover like a lot of other cases are going to offer. But this is kind of a nice classy way to show some of the internals of your computer without being too gaudy with a giant open window that's going to be kind of flimsy and might break. Now, one thing to note, this is a very light case. That's indicative of two things. First off, it's indicative that it's very, very light metal. That means they didn't get a whole lot of thickness in the edges, so this can bend pretty easily. The other thing it's going to tell us and when it's this lightweight, is that on the internals, there's not a whole lot of extra fluff. There's not a whole lot of extra trays or removable parts or things like that. Again, this is an entry level case, so it's not really gonna be a bad thing, everything considered. Now, let's get into some of the internals of the case and show you guys a little bit more of what you're gonna be looking at. Okay, so once we have the screws removed out of the back, we simply put some pressure here with our finger grooves, and it pops right off. So there's our side vent, uh, or side panel, excuse me, with the vent cover on it. Keep in mind, it is pretty flimsy. You can see it kind of moving there in the light. It is very thin metal. As we should expect from Silverstone, the inside is all spray painted black to match the rest of the aesthetic of the case, which is very nice. Uh, you're not going to get a weird silver inner lining, which looks weird. As we go through the actual internals of it, you can see right here it has your USB 3.0 cord, your header, to go directly into your motherboard. Uh, it has your power switch, your LED switch right here, and uh, you also have, if I can get it out, your audio, your HD audio input right here as well, if you can see that. Now, 
It all comes nicely bundled with their plastic uh, wrap here that has the information on the case itself. It also has the information, uh, or the, excuse me, the accessories that you're going to need to put it together. Different screws to attach the motherboard itself into the tray, uh, various other things like that. Now, keep in mind, the front fan is a three-pin fan. What that means is you can actually get fan control on your motherboard. You can plug it right into your motherboard. Uh, if you have an Asus motherboard, something like that, and, and well, pretty much any major manufacturer now is going to include fan control modules directly into the motherboard. You plug it in there, you can increase the speed, decrease the speed, depending on the temperatures of your actual, actual motherboard. <clears throat> We have all of our screws here, as well as one zip tie, because they think that you're only going to need one. And here we have the different instructions on how to remove the bays and how to set everything up. But really not super necessary, but we do appreciate it either way. Looking into the inside of the case, you can see right here, well, let, me, let me unscrew this other panel, and I'll show you something that's actually a very nice feature for a case that's this cost. Now again, we're gonna have the same grooves to get the case off on the other side, which makes it nice. The, the panel comes off real easy. <clears throat> now, as you can see, you can see right through these portions of the actual case. This is going to support a top-mounted power supply. It goes in right here. The nice thing about this is that I have a lot of room here for my fingers to come through. Your cords can come right through here and there's actually a nice little spot here to link in your cords. Let me get that into the light for you. So you can see my finger wiggling. Your cords can go right through there. And that's going to help with the cable management of the case. The back of the motherboard, wide open. So you have a micro ATX board. You want to put an aftermarket cooler so you can do some overclocking. Or you just want to keep your temperatures a little bit better. You have all the room in the world to access it on both sides. Really nice feature, again, from a really pretty cheap case. Let's look here at the drive bays. On the top of the case, we have our CD and optical Blu-ray drive bays. We have two of them, which for most people is actually becoming a little bit excessive in today's day and age. You don't really need two. A lot of people aren't even using one bay. But it is nice just in case you're trying to do a lot of you know, DVD burning, or you want to get a separate Blu-ray player, whatever it is. I don't really see the need for it personally, but it can come in handy, and I do obviously understand that some people might have a use for it. Now, as we go here and look inside of the actual drive base for your hard drives, your platter drives, you're going to have a really pretty limited amount of area right here where it can fit. Now, again, this is going to be a little bit hard to see in the video, but your fan directly cools that area, which is nice. But the problem is, is that this is so shallow, you can see it's, it's really not much longer than my hand, the problem is your, your hard drives are going to be sticking out about that far. That means that they're going to be getting some clearance taken away from your actual motherboard. You're going to be going over your RAM. You might even be pushing into larger heat sinks that you might be putting onto the actual CPU. Checking out the bottom of the case, we can see that there are screw holes for a solid state drive. It lays flat on the bottom of the case. My gripe with these, and I do like them sitting on the bottom of the case, it's slightly elevated, but it's not elevated enough. If you have a SATA power coming from somebody like Corsair, who makes excellent power supplies for rather cheap dollar amount, perfect for this type of case, all they have are 90 degree angled SATA power. So the problem is, you're going to stick it in there and you're going to have to really push to try and get your SSD to fit in there properly. Now it works, I've done it before, I've done it on another Silverstone case, which was a much more expensive one that had the exact same type of layout. Silverstone, if you're listening, you should have grommets on the bottom there. There's no reason not to. You have a bunch of extra space here at the bottom that's not going to be used, and you really should have grommets elevating that about a quarter inch, maybe even a half inch, to give us enough clearance to put our 90 degree angled SATA cables. On the back, we are also going to find ourselves with four expansion slots. Keep in mind, again, this is a micro ATX case. It fits micro ATX boards. A full size ATX board is not going to fit in here. It's going to be too large. It's going to hit the bottom. Not going to be good. So you're not going to use all four of these in most usage scenarios. You're probably going to have a graphic card that takes up these two top ones. And then you're probably going to have, if you want, a wireless card or a USB adapter here at the bottom. Uh, keep in mind, if you do remove these, these do not get put back on. They're, you can't stick them back in. So 
Make sure you know what you're putting into your case and the configuration you're putting it into before you remove them, as if you're like me anyway, you like to have these covered as best you can. Looking at the backside for cable management, uh, we're actually gonna get a very small amount of cable management. It's hard to see in the video, but if I do this, if I, let me just stick my knife there, you can see that the edge is really pretty thin. You're not gonna get a whole lot of clearance here to actually stick your cables in. And I can actually use a cable that they included, the USB 3.0 cable, to illustrate my point. As I stick this USB 3.0 cable up into the top bezel, it's barely fitting, and I mean barely. So you cannot have any overlap of your cables as you're routing the cable management in this case. Now, that's the bad of it. The good of it is that you can stick a lot of your cables through this open area right here where you're gonna have them sitting behind your drive bays. It's not gonna be visible through the vent cover on the side, and it's gonna look a lot better overall. But again, you can route it however you want. There are different areas to route them here on the sides. The only other vent cover that they've given us is on the back. There is space for a 80 millimeter or a 92 millimeter fan on the back of the case to do uh, what I'm assuming to be exhaust. You can also mount a fan on the side of the actual case, but it's not gonna fit if you're putting in a graphic card into this case. Uh, so that's gonna obviously cause an issue if you're trying to do something like that. We're gonna demonstrate how you can actually fit a graphic card. This one is about 11 inches. It's an MSI GTX 670. Uh, it's actually one of the longer GTX 670s. You can actually see on the back of it that the, the cooling portion of it, the fan, the blower, actually extends past the PCB. So a lot of the cards aren't actually gonna be this long. But this case accommodates 14 inch cards. If you're getting anything longer than a foot, you're living about five or six years ago. So most cards are gonna fit within this case. Let me demonstrate that here. With some angling, of course, you can fit that right there into your PCI slot. It fits nice and easy. It actually is pretty snug. And again, you may wanna add some additional cooling to the front to make sure that your airflow is gonna be substantial enough to make sure that that card gets enough air uh, going through it so that it doesn't overheat or create an air or a heat pocket down at the bottom of the case. It is important to note they actually added the screw holes that we need for an 80 millimeter fan to be mounted in the front for another intake fan. Silverstone is all about positive pressure. They want you to put more fans in intake than you have in exhaust. So if you stick an 80 millimeter fan in the back, make sure you're also sticking one in the front because again, this is going to be a nicely ventilated area. Uh, or, well, excuse me, it's gonna have a nice vent cover on this ventilated area. And that's gonna make it so that when the air passes through, you're not getting a bunch of dust clogging up your graphic card, getting all over your uh, heat sink for your CPU. It's gonna keep things really clean. So keep in mind, if you're adding a vent, an exhaust vent out of the back, or excuse me, a fan out of the back, add an intake fan in the front. Make sure that you're keeping that positive airflow coming through. Overall, pretty solid design. It actually feels pretty good as I'm trying to kind of wiggle it and bend it a little bit here in my hands. Uh, this is not gonna be the most durable case in the world, but it's definitely gonna be something that you could easily use for an HTPC, something to put you know, for your home theater system, or if you're going to LAN parties uh, and you wanna just build a LAN box that's not really, really small, but still very easy and maneuverable, or maneuverable, excuse me. This thing is, is really a pretty good option. Thanks again for watching our unboxing of the Silverstone Precision Series PS08. This is an excellent entry-level micro ATX case from Silverstone. It provides what we can see anyway is very good airflow. It has nice air channels to be able to nicely cool your motherboard. It has enough room for a full-size power supply unit on the top. Again, overall, the build quality is pretty dang good for a $40 case. Is this going to compete with some of the higher-end cases out there, the Fortress series, some of the other really nice, high airflow cases? No, it isn't. That's not what it's designed for. Again, at the $40 price point, you're getting what you pay for. But in this case, what you paid for is actually a very nice, very well-built case. Uh, really, Silverstone has thought of everything as far as what an entry-level build is going to need. 
Stay tuned to our channel. We're actually going to be using this case in our build, our upcoming build, to show you guys how you can build your own computer from scratch using something cheap like a $40 case you can find online. If you want to purchase this product, please click the link in the description. It directly supports us and our ability to make future videos like this. Like the video if you liked it. Comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or you just want to be heard. Make sure you subscribe for more videos like this and continue to check back to our channel for different updates on other things that we're looking at. We appreciate your support. We are Gus Tech. We'll see you next time.